Welcome to the strange and mysterious world of the Middle Ages. This was a time of knights, castles, and battles, but it was also a time of peculiar customs and bizarre beliefs. Here are 10 weird facts about the medieval times that I bet you never learned in school. Number 1. Animals could be convicted for crimes. In medieval Europe, animals were often tried in court for all sorts of misdeeds, from causing harm to humans to damaging property. One famous case involved a group of pigs that were accused of trampling a field of crops. The pigs were brought before a judge who listened to the testimony of both the prosecution and the defense before rendering a verdict. In the end, the pigs were found guilty and ordered to pay a fine, which of course was never collected. Even insects were not immune to prosecution. In fact, there were many cases of court-sanctioned bug bashing, with church authorities acting as a sort of holy pest control company. Pope Stephen VI even once sprayed a pesticide of holy water around Rome's rural outskirts in an attempt to rid the area of pests. Pulpit pronouncements were often used together with trials against insects, and on occasion, the insects would even be told in writing or verbally that they would be better off in a neighboring village. One particularly notable case took place in 1478 in Switzerland, where seed beetles were put on trial for destroying crops. The insects were publicly scolded and the Bishop of Lucerne told them to stop what they were doing. But the insects ignored this warning and continued to cause destruction. As a result, the Bishop ordered the insects to leave the land within six days, proclaiming that these creatures were not passengers on Noah's Ark and were therefore open to excommunication. If they refused to leave, they were ordered to appear in the Avenches, Switzerland, to explain their refusal to follow the orders. The records do not mention whether the insects actually turned up in inventions, but the following year they were back and causing problems once again. In response, the church blamed the pest's continuing presence on the sins of the people and suggested that they could offset their wrongdoing by paying more tithe money. Number 2. Eels to pay rent Did you know that in the past, people used to pay for stuff with eels? Yeah, you heard that right, eels as in those slimy, slippery fish that you're probably trying to avoid at the grocery store. Eels were a valuable commodity in medieval Europe, where they were widely consumed as a source of food. They could be preserved for months by salting, smoking, or drying. People would often group eels together on sticks to be smoked and easily transported. A group of 25 eels on a stick was known as a stick, where a bundle of 10 was called a bind. They were also easy to transport since they could be carried live in baskets or barrels. As a result, eels became a widely accepted form of payment, especially in rural areas where other forms of currency were scarce. At the end of the 11th century, the use of eels as currency reached a peak, with over 540,000 eels being used as a form of payment every year. But as the centuries passed, the practice of using eels as currency gradually declined. By the 16th century, the use of eels as currency had all but disappeared. Number 3. Football was banned in England Did you know that football, or soccer as we call it in the US, was actually banned in England at one point in history? The ban on football dates back to the Middle Ages, when the game was seen as a violent and rowdy activity that often caused public disturbances. In 1280, a player in a game at Olgham in Northumberland was killed when he ran onto an opponent's dagger. In 1303, a student named Adam was killed while playing football in the high street of Oxford, and it was rumored that he was killed by Irish students. In 1321, a canon named William was even granted a papal dispensation to excuse him from playing football due to its dangerous nature. King Edward II officially banned the game in 1314, declaring it to be of no value and forbade it from being played. But the love for the game proved to be stronger than the ban, and people continued to play the game in secret. Eventually, the ban was lifted and football became a beloved and important part of English culture. Number 4. Wealthy Medieval Ladies Owned Metal Needles while we tend to associate diamonds with wealth and status today, in the Middle Ages, wealthy ladies actually valued metal needles above diamonds. You see, back then, needles were made by hand and were therefore quite expensive and difficult to come by. They were also essential for everyday life. Women used them for sewing, of course, but needles were also used for all sorts of tasks, from repairing clothes to making jewelry. 
so it's no surprise that needles became a symbol of wealth and status. Wealthy ladies would often collect needles, just like we might collect diamonds or other precious jewels today. In fact, some of the most coveted needles were made of gold or other precious metals and were decorated with intricate designs. Talk about an unusual way to show off your wealth. Number five, marriage was usually outside the church. Marriage in medieval times was a secular institution that had more to do with practical considerations like property and inheritance than with love and commitment. In fact, weddings didn't even take place inside of the church. Records show that people got married on roads, at pubs, at friends' houses, and even in bed. As time passed and individuals were granted more rights, it became less necessary to seek permission from families to get married. However, the peasant class was an exception, as they still needed to ask their masters for permission if they wanted to marry. Sometimes weddings took place around the church. This could be, for example, at the church door. The wedding at the church door was a curious mix of vows and financial arrangements. The groom would arrive with a shield or book stacked with gold or silver, which was meant to represent the bride's dower, symbolic gifts that she would keep even if the marriage ended. The bride would wear a ring to symbolize this gift, which is still a common wedding tradition today. Although a priest wasn't necessary to get married at the church door, having one present made it easier to prove that the marriage had taken place. The couple would exchange vows and that would be that. After the ceremony, the couples went inside the church to take communion. Number six, authors didn't write their own books. In the Middle Ages, writing was seen as a kind of labor and intellectuals and theologians didn't bother doing it themselves. Instead, they would use scribes to write down their ideas and theories. These scribes would take dictation from the authors, transcribing their words onto parchment or paper. The authors would then review the written text and make any necessary revisions, but the bulk of the writing was done by the scribes. This system persisted for many centuries until the invention of the printing press made it easier and more efficient to produce books. It wasn't until the 19th century that the concept of authorship as we know it today, the idea that an author is the person who writes a book, really took hold. Number seven, popes lived longer than others. During medieval times, the average life expectancy for males born in landholding families in England was relatively short. Many people did not even make it past childhood, with the average life expectancy for those who did reach the age of 10 being just 32.2 years. If someone managed to survive to the age of 25, their remaining life expectancy was only 23.3 years. Popes, on the other hand, in the Middle Ages, lived oftentimes much longer. The average lifespan of a pope was around 66 years during the period 1200 to 1599 AD. Now, you might be wondering how this could be possible, given the lack of modern medical knowledge and the harsh living conditions of the time. But the fact is, popes in the Middle Ages had access to the best medical care and the most nourishing food, which likely contributed to their longer lifespans. In addition, the fact that they lived in the Vatican which was protected by walls and guards, probably helped to keep them safe from harm. But another very important factor to take into account is that you could only be elected to papacy after a certain age. This is it for today, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the video about the weirdest facts of the medieval times. Which of these facts did you find the weirdest? Let us know in the comments. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you'll be the first to know about our amazing new videos filled with crazy history facts.